Okay, so this is Matthias speaking once again. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick status update on Scavenia's development so far. Um, there's been a lot of stuff going on since the last video, actually a whole lot of stuff. And things constantly get improved and so on. So this is one of my uh, videos to demonstrate the progress so far. If I just go ahead and load the game, because it's getting late and this is actually just a quick update before I go to bed. So. As I load the game now, uh, the first thing you'll notice, hopefully, if everything works correctly, um, is that we've added a much greater menu uh, to the game. Um, we've also added splash screens, loading screens, and so on. So the game is, in general, a lot more, it, it feels a lot more complete than last time. So th this is the menu uh, that will be integrated into Steam, and uh, on the left hand side you have the map editor stuff, single, uh, well on the middle you have uh, single player stuff and on the right you have multiplayer stuff. All this may change later, uh, it's just a mock up kind of. We may use this as the final menu if we if we think it's good enough. Um, we may make some design changes later, I actually think we're going to do that if we figure out a better way to make the menu. Um, anyway, so I've created two maps with the map editor this time, not just uh, the regular um, text stuff. So now I'm just going to go ahead and try to click uh, on Compact Winter Mall, which is a compact edition of the Winter Mall map already shown earlier in a video um, that's very small. But as you can see, this is only running on a mono CPU build, which runs on one core, and uh, it has already loaded the map. It goes, it, it's pretty, it's pretty fast. So one thing you'll notice if this works is that we have towers, and I can pick a tower just like last time. The only difference here is that I can now actually build towers as I want to and the paths will change uh, dynamically. So the pathing path is entirely correct. Um, if you take a while to notice then if I block this path right here uh, most of the units will pass by. If I block this whole passage here they will actually go the other way hopefully. What is that last one doing? Yeah, it's still a bit buggy but they're all going the, the other way. So uh, you can actually um, ma you can actually play the game now. Um, a lot of things are still adjustable uh, and so on. If I just go ahead and restart the game, then I'll show you the the map editor part so far, the little parts of it. And my computer is being a bit slow right now. Booting it up again. Yeah. What takes time here is, is the uh, shader compilation and um, loading all the textures and so on used for the game. Okay, so I'm just going to skip this. And here we go. I can now click Create New Map. I'm just going to do that. And it asks me what kind of tile size do I want. And this tooltip is a bit buggy, but we're adding documentation to our field. Um, so I want a pixel size of 100 by 100 per tile, and I want the map to be, let's say, 100 tiles in width and height. So I click OK, and now it has generated a full tile map for me. I can zoom in and zoom out as much as I want. And the first thing to make for these, uh, th this tile stuff is the definitions. Here I can define all kinds of stuff. In this case, I want to define a destination point. So here I have my destination definitions. I'm going to click Add New. And it has already suggested a lot of stuff uh, for the destination itself, its size, and its color. I'm just going to click OK on this one. It's going to generate a white destination point that is uh, quite large. And I click Save and Close. And then down here, under Destinations, I can now get my destination. And I can place a few destination points on my map. I can even draw them if I wish to. Um, so that way, when you, you can actually go into Definitions, and also define stuff like um, towers, uh, what uh, what projectiles these towers actually spawn, which civilization these towers are bound to, and so on. It is actually quite, uh, it, it is getting quite advanced. And we're working on the user friendliness of all this. You can also modify the wave spawn speed and so on. But um, yeah, that's all for now. It's going to be a lot more user friendly in the future, but we're really getting there. Thanks for uh, watching this video.